Hello, you two, Ronan Kazi. Legendary District Union. Can you ever be perfect? There's a lot of things that may or may not be perfect. If you bowl a 300 game in bowling, is that perfect? Could it be more perfect? I'm a firm... Well, this is usually when I say thank you for subscribing, liking, sharing. <laughs> the video's over. No. Uh, one of the things that I've always believed in is that you can be perfect in small doses. You might not be perfect, you know, all day, but you might be perfect for an hour. You might do something where there's no mistakes. You did it the best you can do it, the best it can be done. Um, doesn't mean that you're perfect. Can you do points of perfection? Could you say the perfect prayer? Could you uh, make the perfect cake? You know, there's a lot of things. And I've done District Union a lot on Legendary. Uh, I've sped this up two times. We did this fast. I think I've told you you can do this under 30 minutes. Uh, we did it in about 25 or 26. And so... It's not perfect, but it's a really good run. And I talked to you recently about frame, framing things. You could frame this as perfect, but this is when you start getting into philosopher arguments. You could say, well, it's perfect for me, but it's, if you die, if someone goes down, no one defines that as perfect. Even games will have, uh, you know, you, you win an attribute, you don't win an attribute, you win a commendation or something if you don't, if no one in your group goes down, there's those kind of things. So we know that you can't just claim what you think is perfect and whatever. There are some things that, you know, you had a, a, a better run than not. But framing is a really big portion of all this. And sometimes your group may not be perfect, your job at work may not be perfect, but you may have done your job perfectly. You may have done everything right how you're supposed to, anticipated some things. And I was just passing through a podcast today and they were talking about, you know, you can't focus for more than an hour, uh, 90 minutes or two hours in general. And I, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I, I have to agree with that. There's a, when I'm playing video games or I'm at work, there's a, I get in the zone. <laughs> you know, you get into an area where you, everything's clicking, you're doing everything right. And that lasts for a certain amount of time. And then I kind of fall off that. If you ever think of the myth of the guy that has to put the boulder up the hill, then it goes over the side and he p pushes it back up over the other side. And he, it's a never ending task. That's kind of what it's like to be perfect. There's going to be times where you're at the top, you're the pinnacle of something, <clears throat> but it doesn't stay there. It's a constantly evolving, constantly moving thing. Sometimes you're in sync with your partner, your spouse, your children, your co-workers, and then you fall off that. And nothing taught me that more than golf. When I was a young person... I played golf. I originally picked up golf to it was something I could do with my dad. But I eventually just it grew on me and it's something I did in high school. I tried to play basketball, but I, I was on the golf team and I did pretty well at that. What I liked about golf is there's times where you could hit you could strike the ball perfectly. It wasn't every shot. I was never that good. But you'd hit the ball and it's you know, the joke is you're going to hit a golf ball once good around where it makes you want to come back because it's so sweet how it feels. This is my Vile Jammer build. Uh, I have everything on the Ancelair. I think I have Firefly. I was going to jam the crap out of that. I always push up too far. I forget about that we're going to kill that dog and it's going to do everything. But with Scorpio and Creeping Death, it has the same effect. And if you notice, I mentioned prayer, if you said the perfect prayer, that's for, there's always people in my life uh, that believe that only God was perfect. And that's what a lot of theological arguments are about. You know, if 
you think about, if you study Christianity, Thomas Aquinas in the Middle Ages was a person. He went, I think, Summa Theologica was the series of books. And for whatever reason, my mom bought me those books because I thought I was going to read all that stuff. It was very nice of her. My, my mom was awesome. But there was always this argument about perfection. And if God was perfect, why would he make evil? And <clears throat> there's all that kind of stuff. And so that's kind of the thing about philosophy. You're always having those kind of arguments about things. And when I say argument, it's not like you're heated, but an argument is you're trying to prove a point or do something. And uh, sometimes before I can get my podcast or my YouTube on in my car, the local radio station will be on and people will be giving their arguments. And the arguments are so weak. And it has to be because they have to do them like that so that they get people to listen in these echo chambers. Whether it's left or right, doesn't matter. The arguments for things and against things are just crazy. And how they put them... Thank you for the res, sir. How they put them and how they argue them, and just, it's infantile, some of the arguments people use. And it doesn't matter if it's a point you want or you like or not, if it's a weak argument, it's a weak argument, you can recognize it. If you're that much of a fanboy of your side, whatever side it is, people used to do that about Steve and Jobs. So let's not, let's not do political, let's do Steve Jobs. Everything Steve Jobs is perfect and blah, blah, blah. Got fired from Apple, got fired from Apple. Couldn't run the business. They brought a guy in that ran Pepsi, John Scully. Then they brought Stephen Jobs back, and then maybe it was okay. But not everything. You ever hear of the Newton? And scene. So everything everyone does isn't perfect. Elon Musk really loves, everyone loves Elon Musk. But not everything he does is perfect either. He might be good at some things. And that's what I say with everyone. We're halfway done. So I'm not a big fan. If uh, I was successful a couple times over here, that means I'm successful. It doesn't transfer. You might be, in general, I want you to think about this. People that are good at engineering, people that are good at interacting with things, aren't normally good at interacting with people. People that are good at interacting with people aren't normally good with interacting with things or thinking in that way. You very seldom have people that are good at both. It's very rare. And we want this so much. <clears throat> I was talking to my son about something like this. And really, I'm going to say this to you again. Imagine an XY graph. Can you imagine it? Y is going up and down and X is going left and right. And on that graph, you have two lines in the middle of that. One kind of starts over on the left side and kind of slopes down slightly. The other one starts on the left side and slopes up. In between there is where your performance need to be. In that, I'm going to call that a trumpet. In that trumpet is going to be where you're going to be best served. It's easier to go all the way up or all the way down or go to the max is where you can feel a hard wall. But that's not the best. It very seldom is the best. When we were driving the boat, they told us never to go above 80% because you always need that extra in a case of an emergency. Now, I didn't listen to them. I never ran into emergencies, but that was always in my head. You might say that, why in a boat? Because you might be in a situation where you need extra power because you're in a current or you need to get, maybe you're, maybe you're not running aground, but maybe you're in muddy water and you need extra power to get out of it. There's a bunch of different situations. Maybe you're powering through a turn. There's a bunch of different things. And that's with your effort for sure. I've learned that in my life through college and work is <clears throat> I can't give a thousand percent because then I'm worn out. When I had kids, when my kids were younger, uh, a lot of people would go out on the road and they would just tear it up. And they go, well, when I get home on the weekend, that's when I relax. When I'd go out on the road, I'd go in the hotel and go to sleep pretty early because on the weekends, I was giving all that energy to my kids. I didn't see them during the week. I was a technician traveling on the road when I was first got out of the military. So that's how I looked at the world. Why am I going to 
expend all my energy. And then when I'm with the most important people in my life, I'm just not going to be able to give them that. that. I learned that lesson like way young. And you can do whatever you want. You have to do what fits for you. And we get back to perfect. What's the perfect way to raise your kids? I'm going to tell you the perfect way to raise your kids. That they live. <laughs> that they live. That they don't do something where they feel horrible and they scar themselves or they kill themselves or any horrible things. Can you always protect your kids? You can't. My dad died when I was 18. The last, that's Roxy. The last time I talked to him, I told him I loved him. I think last time my sister talked to my dad, the other one of my sisters, maybe they didn't say that they loved him or didn't they? They might not have expressed it because they thought he was always going to be there. I just did it by dumb luck. So I've carried that my whole life. I've never thought about it. My other sister thinks about that her whole life. She thinks about, man, I didn't sell dad. I loved him last time. I, or I didn't express how much. And I happened to. And it was just dumb luck. But I didn't forget that lesson. The people I love and care about, I try to let them know that every day. And in all my interactions with everyone, some people say, well, why are you so hard? Why are you so blunt? I try to give part of myself. I try to care about everything I'm doing. I try to make my actions meaningful. Am I perfect? No. Are there times that I perform perfectly? There might be sometimes when I say the right thing at the right time for the right person. But the point is, you only go through this once. Unlike the video games, you're not getting a revive in this game. Whether you're a Hindu, a Christian, a Buddhist, a Muslim, whoever you believe, if you go to a heaven or you get reincarnated or you stop being reincarnated, the point is you only have one time through this life. And so why is it important we try the hardest content? Because we're trying to test ourselves and perfect ourselves. To what end? That's a good question. <laughs> that seems like a topic for a different video. So we're doing Legend DCU, District U and DUA. I always fight it counterclockwise or clockwise here. I fight over there, come over here, push over here. Then we're the boss. They're going to be the opposite side of this. That's Roxy going crazy. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the dingy bell. You don't have to comment all the time. For the people that are are always on the channel, uh, I'm putting out content every day, so you do not have to comment every day if you don't want to. I appreciate everyone. If you feel like I'm saying something that you agree with or or disagree with, please let me know. Please share. But don't feel obligated to. Uh, I appreciate that you subscribed. I appreciate that you laugh at my dumb little jokes. I appreciate you listen to my somewhat different podcast slash game tasks slash whatever this is. Maybe we'll all invent a new word for it. And I'm sure I'm not the first person like with a bile jammer. <laughs> okay, YouTube, thank you. Appreciate you. Bye.